A central issue in epistemology is the question of what the nature of knowledge is or how to define it. The term knowledge has various meanings in natural language. It can refer to an awareness of facts, as in knowing that Mars is a planet, to a possession of skills, as in knowing how to swim, or to an experiential acquaintance, as in knowing Daniel Craig personally. This video discusses some of the different ways to classify knowledge. This list shows some of the common distinctions. One of the most important distinctions in epistemology is between what can be known a priori and what can be known a posteriori. A priori knowledge is knowledge that is known independently of experience, that is, it is non-empirical, or arrived at before experience, usually by reason. It will henceforth be acquired through anything that is independent from experience. Mathematical equations are one of the most popular examples of a priori knowledge. You could answer that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 without engaging in empirical inquiry to know that it is true. Another example of a priori knowledge is the sentence all husbands are married. One knows that it is true by understanding the meanings of the words it contains. Because husband means married male, it is true by definition that all husbands are married. A posteriori knowledge is knowledge that is known by experience, that is, it is empirical, or arrived at through experience. Knowledge can be reasoned and logically explained only after an individual has observed a certain event with their senses. A classic example of a posteriori knowledge is the observation that the sky is blue. We know that the sky is blue because we have observed it with our eyes. A posteriori knowledge is considered the most subjective type of knowledge since it heavily relies on individuals' interpretations of their own observations. Therefore, a priori knowledge is seen as more reliable than a posteriori knowledge. Explicit knowledge can be documented, transmitted, and most importantly, learned by outsiders. It can be communicated easily to others and is stored in documents, libraries, books, video tutorials, white papers, and other forms of verbal or written communication. Scientific laws, mathematical theorems, and historical facts, such as the United States Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4, 1776, are examples of explicit knowledge. Tacit knowledge is not consciously known and is difficult to articulate in words. It is knowledge of things that are often understood without necessarily being said and is often personal or cultural. This type of knowledge is informal, learned with experience over time, and usually applies to a specific situation. An example of tacit knowledge could be a salesperson's ability to know the perfect time to give their pitch during a meeting. A combination of experience, reading social cues, and other personal factors must come together to form that unique bit of knowledge. Another example is an expert musician who cannot communicate their knowledge in words to potential music students. Propositional knowledge is expressed in the form of propositions or statements and can be true or false. Some examples are knowledge of facts or truths, such as the earth is round or snow is white. It can be expressed in sentences that have a truth value, true or false. Propositional knowledge is sometimes also called descriptive or declarative knowledge. Procedural knowledge is knowledge of how to do something, such as I know how to ride a bike or I know how to play chess. It can be expressed in sentences that have an action or a skill. Procedural knowledge is sometimes also called practical or skill knowledge. Procedural knowledge differs from propositional knowledge in that it is acquired by doing. Hands-on experience is extremely valuable as it can be used to obtain employment. We are seeing this today as experience, procedural, is eclipsing education, propositional. Many employers desire the procedural knowledge and experiences of potential employees over the educational propositional knowledge that students learn in school. These types of knowledge are not mutually exclusive, and one can have more than one type of knowledge about the same thing. For example, one can have propositional knowledge that Paris is the capital of France and procedural knowledge of how to get around Paris. A tour guide has a tacit knowledge of the best time to visit the Eiffel Tower to avoid traffic. Your friend could have a posteriori knowledge of the best tasting food in Paris. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Love of Learning channel to see more videos like this one. The two videos shown on the screen might interest you. Click on them to learn more.